One of the enemy's greatest lies is that some people blame God when bad things happen, saying things like, Why did God do this? How could a good God allow bad things to happen to innocent people? What is God trying to teach me through this catastrophe? The belief that God causes bad things to happen is one of the greatest lies in the world today. The truth is that God is good. He is really, really all good. He is the essence of all goodness. God is a life giver and healer and is completely good. And in James 1.17, it says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. The devil is continually, constantly bad, and God is always and forever good. At the root of all evil is the devil, our enemy. He has been the source of evil from the beginning. Jesus only gives two reasons why healing may not happen, unbelief and anti-biblical traditions of men or sacred cows. Essentially, sacred cows cause unbelief, so unbelief is the only thing that can stop healing. Sacred cows are man-made and deny God's power and blame God or others for lack of results. They make excuses for failure and distort God's will resulting in doubt or unbelief. Remember how the enemy fights against you. He must fight you with carnal, fleshly weapons. The believer has been given spiritual weapons that the enemy cannot fight against. Because the enemy cannot fight you with spiritual weapons, his goal is to get you out of the spirit and into the flesh. How does he do this? The devil wants to cause you to step out of faith and into fear and doubt. He wants you to leave the spirit and enter into uncontrolled emotions. According to the Bible, Jesus heals us by sending his word. Psalm 10720. According to Jesus, in the parable of the sower, we should anticipate that the devil will try to steal the word right away before it spreads. The devil's primary mission is to prevent the seed of God's word from being rooted in your heart. If he is unsuccessful, he will try to get you to abort the seed after it is rooted by trying to convince you that you were not healed by putting false signs and symptoms of pain, illness, and disease on you. This is why the Bible tells us in 1 Timothy 6.12 to fight the good fight of faith. Receiving healing or anything that the Lord gives us, and maintaining healing sometimes takes a fight of faith. The question you are going to have to settle in this battle is what you are going to believe and accept as your reality. There are two kingdoms at war for your life, the kingdom of Satan and the kingdom of God. Your flesh will try and convince you to believe the symptoms, the world will try and convince you of the doctor's facts and medical conclusions, and Satan will try and get you to doubt God. The fight of faith is to maintain your faith in the midst of the storm. You fight the flesh by being in the spirit. You fight the world by standing on the report of the Lord, and you fight the devil by resisting him and keeping your eyes on the Lord and his promise. Every believer is the healed of the Lord, fighting the fight of faith to continually walk in wholeness and divine health. Believers with symptoms of sickness, disease, and physical challenges are not the sick or the broken trying to get healed. They are the healed and the whole using their faith to walk in what the Word says that they are. We are not talking about walking in denial and telling the doctors that they have misdiagnosed us. We are to embrace, believe, and walk by faith and not by sight. We agree with God and not with the illness. We take authority over disease, not agree with it. When you have cancerous tumors growing throughout your body, fractured bones, physical blindness, or a medical diagnosis, how can you claim to be healed? Let me give you an example. Let us say that a poverty-stricken homeless person living on the street does not know that they are heirs to a fortune. They will continue to live in poverty until they find out about what they truly have. Even after they find out, it may take months for them to access the wealth that belongs to them. 
They may continue to live in terrible circumstances while facing legal challenges and people trying to lie to them out of selfish reasons to steal away their fortune. Even though they are wealthy on paper, there may be a season between legally owning what they have and physically occupying what they legally have. There are 182 places in the Bible where it says that God's will is to heal us. Now to occupy that divine health, you must get a revelation of what you have, and then you may have to fight the fight of faith to enforce the word in your life and to bind the devil and his illegal works aimed at stealing what is rightfully yours. We walk by faith, not by our symptoms, we need to continue to stand, declare, and confess the word of God over our illness while shaking off the symptoms. We must be willing to do that for as long as it takes. We never accept anything from the devil. We will only receive and accept what the word says and nothing else. That is our reality. Even if the symptoms come and go, we reject discouragement and go deeper with God and his word. As soon as God speaks to us and we receive our personal revelation of our situation, then we will be healed. The deeper we go with God, the more likely we will hear from God, and that is what creates the miracle. Many people stand on the Word but do not hear from God, so the Word never turns into revelation or power. The Word of God flows from information to realization to revelation to manifestation and finally to transformation. The key is to meditate on the Word so it can become revelation and then we will see the miracle of healing. If you have any questions, please see the description for more information.